Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with the Scariest Podcast. Woo! I'm Robin Grace, and this is Adam Diaz. Hello. And we're here to read the stories that you send us. Indeed. Very, really very excited. excited. <laughs> You're, I, usually you have your normal professional intro, but you did get really excited there. Uh, but the stories that you folks send us, we call homegrown horrors. Robin, what is a homegrown horror? So homegrown horrors are the stories of paranormal spiritual activities that have happened to you, your family, your friends, uh, that you graciously share with us. And they can be scary. They can be heartfelt. Uh, they can be totally coincidental and hilarious. Um, but... It's just your experiences, and we get to share those experiences with the rest of our spooky friends, and it's absolutely awesome. It's a really good time. Are you looking at my hair? Is my hair messy or no, something? No, no, I'm just looking at your hair. Okay. I'm just like watching where it parts because your bangs look really good tonight. Um, oh, they thanks. look good every night. Oh, shit. Uh, how do I get out of this? Tailspin. Um, but seriously, I love that show. <laughs> there you go. I figured it out. Um, but I wanted to say that some folks also send us messages about like brushes with true crime. And those are fascinating and equally terrifying. So, yes. you know, you, you can send us those, too. And basically anything that's scary or scary-ish, like we're willing to take. And honestly, the funny shit, too. Send it all. You can email storytime at scaryish.com. Go to our website, scaryish.com, and click on Contact Us. Or message us on any of our social medias. Twitter is at scaryishpod. Instagram is at scaryishpodcast. And Facebook is facebook.com slash scaryishpodcast. You can reach out to us in a multitude of ways. And if you want your story read, let us know. And uh, you might just have it read on the show. And you might have it read. I mean, we record all these live every 6.30. No, not every 6.30. Every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 8.30 Central, 9.30 on the East Coast. And you can come watch us at twitch.tv slash scaryishpodcast or youtube.com slash scaryish. It is 100% free. YouTube, you don't have to sign up for an account. Uh, Twitch, you have to sign up for an account, but that is free to make. It's super quick. I think yes. all they need is an email address. And like Robin always says, if you have Amazon Prime, which a lot of us do, you can basically link that to a Twitch account. And Amazon gives you something called Twitch Prime, which means you're a super Twitcher. And uh, you can give five of Amazon's dollars per month to any channel that you watch that's an affiliate. We are an affiliate. So you can give us five of Jeff Bezos' dollars every month like folks that did this while we were off the air named uh fly with mario who subscribed and uh random 401 who also subscribed and i don't even think they use their twitch prime they just gave us five of their own dollar dues thank you so, so much So shout out to them we really appreciate you also uh class beetle 88 and miranda who also followed us in our downtime we appreciate you this thing is supposed to tell me all the folks who decide to follow us while we're not on the air and it doesn't but it's been updated recently and i think it's actually working oh that's what's cool. interesting about our streaming software is it's not even at version 1.0 yet it's version 0.15.1 so we're like in early beta stages with this thing but it's been pretty good to us so thank you to everyone who's watching us live tonight and also thank you to everyone who has decided to listen to us in yes. the normal podcast version. So we haven't really discussed who would go first on this, but I think I'm going to be the one who winds up taking the first story. Okay. I mean, if you want to, sure. you, you go for it. Uh, my first one, and I know there's some short ones this episode. There's also some long ones. So. Thank you so much to the Gray Coast for subscribing. Yeah. Five months now. Thank, thank you so you. much. And it was with uh, Twitch Prime, which means thank you, Jeff Bezos, for them dollar dollar bills, y'all. All right. The subject of this first one is Creep stalker ghost and slender man and it starts out like this howdy robin and adam howdy howdy and then a parenthesis says howdy howdy, howdy. adam's british hello <laughs> my name is christian and i'm 18 years old from dallas That's texas your british hello hello oh my gosh okay oi no i don't know oh, what my british hello is. my gosh <laughs> all right they're from dallas texas in parentheses in a rich place uh also ladies i'm single lol okay that got weird really quick I'm about to graduate, and when I started listening to your podcast, I started passing my classes, so I shout out you for my graduation. That's Give me nice. some of that energy. I need that energy. Right? I think we all need that energy, so <laughs> I don't know how we gave it to you, but I'm very happy that you got it from somewhere. Yeah. It goes on to say, anyways, to the story, and I think they paused there because they knew that we were going to have some bullshit tangent, which we didn't get too far down the rabbit hole on, so I'm pretty proud of us. Uh, I'm a YouTuber, gamer, and I have a camera that I'm going to use when I get 100 subs, but I used it for one night because I thought someone broke into my room, so I had night vision on it, and when I woke up the night, I, when I woke up that, that morning, it says oh. the night morning, which is like that two things. That night or morning. Maybe it was like super late at night and super Maybe early Maybe this morning. is choose your own adventure. Ooh. When I woke <laughs> up the night morning, I saw movement outside my window, and then Slender Man was looking into my window at me, and probably about 10 minutes later, he left. 
So I guess Slender Man just popped by. And I'm for still, 10 minutes, though. For 10 minutes. Only 10 minutes during the night morning. Uh, he left. Then a ghost was at the end of my bed. So, yeah, fuck this shit. I'm out. So I'm not sure where you're going to go. But, yeah, I think we'd all be out on that. It sounds like a really bad dream. Yeah. Anyways, I wish I still had the video. But when I tried to post it, my old computer burst into flames. So all of those other videos of Slender Man are fake. So, yeah, that does sound unfortunate when you try and post stuff that's paranormal and something burst into flames. Uh, hope you guys are well, and hopefully this gets into a video or podcast. Oh, before I forget, shout out to Spotify, which I have listened to your podcast, your whole podcast, in a week. That's a lot of binging. Yeah. Uh, sincerely, your neighbors from Texas. P.S. If you come to Dallas, I will be willing to go to Denton with you to the Goatman Bridge. We've had a lot of folks volunteer to go to like, the Goatman Bridge with us. I don't want to go, so it's probably not going to happen. If you have Slenderman I mean, greeting you for 10 minutes at a time and your computer's bursting into flames, uh, we'll Skype you in, dog. Like I don't think that's the energy that we really want around us if we're going to go investigate uh, a haunted place. Anytime I hear something set on fire, I just think of IT Crowd and how I'll Moss just, is like, I'll just place this with the rest of the fire. I absolutely like, love that show. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a solid email. Thank you for sending that in. And uh, you know what's fun about the live episodes is what we're about to do, which always gets edited out, is we turn to the stream chat because we have YouTube and Twitch watching us live. And we ask folks, hey, what did you think of that story? Which we're about to do and speculate a little bit, which is just sort of like, I guess we would call it like inside baseball, which is a term that I don't pretty much ever use. But inside baseball. It just means it's something for the folks who are here right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and turn and do that, but I'm going to edit this to make a really nice transition while Robin moves on into the second email. Uh, so take it away, Robin. All right. So this next email is pretty short. Uh, it's from Rob and it goes, hi, Robin and Adam. Hello. Hello. So I was sitting up playing games cause I'm a total slob. All of a sudden I see a flash and woke up on the ground. Like I passed out or so it felt like. So I got up and was all of a sudden running from this ghostly owl and then it got me and I woke up in a cave and then my bed. Thus began a weird stream of dreams. That sounds like a very okay. strange stream of dreams. I was dreams. gonna say this sounds like a nightmare. Um, so I'm glad that they I've went never, with the whole this is a strange, weird stream of have dreams. Have you ever had uh, occurrences like that where your dreams are just one thing to another to another to another and then yeah. it's just ran i've never had that i've had that i wouldn't say frequently but i've had it often enough where like i'll know when i'm like trapped in like the whole like fake waking up thing or like where you're teleporting to a new scenario and you just can't get out of it okay yeah i've had it happen to me multiple times it's just uh it's a nightmare literally uh, okay so one of which uh one of these dreams was sleep paralysis and i thought of what adam said just fuck off demon and it went away then I high five Adam, and then we both said "fuck off, demon," and I woke up. I that's, say, that's kind of awesome. I, I don't think I was there, but it's cool that I was in your dream high five and you. Uh, Real that, life high five. That was the best one. P.S. I love your pod and love to listen while I game. And Robin, keep being a goofy goober, spooky boy out. Keep on creeping on. <laughs> Thank you. I am a goofy goober. My coworker today was like, "All right, chunky monkey." I was like, "I will." Which coworker was this? this Cody. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was just like, don't make me stab you. Like, what the fuck? Um, me and Cody are going to have to have some words. No one calls you a chunky monkey. I will stab someone. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes. Thank you so much, Rob, for your email. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it. The first two have gone pretty quick. So I'm going to move on to the second one for me, third overall. And the subject is a story. So pretty solid subject, I'd say. And it Sounds starts like out, a story. It does. It starts out like this. Hi, Robin and Adam. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Lily, and the story you're about to read isn't actually mine. Feel free to read on the podcast. We'd be super honored if you did. Supernatural, paranormal things don't generally happen to me, or when they do, I guess I don't really notice. Side note, I always think there's people out there where shit happens to them, and they're like, I swear, like, it just doesn't happen to me. It's like, and there's a ghost next to them just flipping you off. Like, I've tried to scare you so much, but you don't pay attention. <laughs> so it's nice to know that there's people out there that are like that. Getting back into it. My best friend, Tasha, told me this story, and when she did, I immediately asked her if she could write it down so we could send it in to you, me being a nice. fan. Here's her story. Shout out to Tasha for giving her story yeah. to be sent in. We appreciate that. And it's in quotes, so this should have come from Tasha. It says, I don't usually watch scary movies or TV shows because I've never really wanted, and, never really wanted to, and I've never really been allowed to. My family believes that watching or listening to scary or satanic things will allow spirits into the house my mom's the same way i get you 
What was the rule that you guys had about open windows or yelling at night? You can't yell at night. You can't whistle at night because it asks the spirits in. Or it the invites demon, or beckons yeah. them or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's she just freaked me out a lot. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Or like when you're walking at night, you have to hold your hands like this, like keep your thumbs in. So you're like you ball up a fist, but with so, your thumb on the inside. Yes. It's like how you're not supposed to throw a punch. Pretty much, I guess. But it's so that the spirits can't enter you. I don't know. My mom freaked me out a lot. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. So lots of strange, um, what are those called? When it's uh, superstitions. superstitions. Yeah. Yes. Just for all our listeners that if you want to keep a person from not entering you, you want the thumb on the outside <laughs> so you don't break it when you punch them in the a face if they attempt to. You. All right. That's a good one. Getting I like back that to it. One. one night, however, after watching American Horror Story with a friend, I decided to continue the episode we had left off on. I was maybe 10 minutes Which in. Which season? Yeah, that's a good question. I was maybe 10 minutes in before my room got insanely cold, so I moved to my bed under the covers. About five minutes later, my light bulb began to flicker. I continued watching the show as the lights in my house are kind of funky, and I didn't think too much of it until it started doing it more and more frequently and turned completely off for about three seconds before coming back on. At this point, I paused the show and waited. Instead of flickering, it goes out with a loud pop, and I watched the whole thing. I turned the show back. When light bulbs explode, that's just creepy, especially if you're yeah. just, like, staring at but it, it at the time. It does happen. I turned the show back on, a little more spooked than before, and wrote it off as coincidence. I like that you're just going to power ahead with watching this thing that you're not supposed to watch. Because, like, sometimes I wonder, like, if you set your own rules in your life that you live by and you break your rules... Does that, like, attract things? And, like, as opposed to someone who's allowed to watch these things, where, like, other things can't approach them as easily? Because it's like, well, you know, they're not breaking their own rules. You know what I mean? It's like you, you kind of set your own standards. Uh, all right, so we're going to get back into this. Wrote it off as a coincidence. When a light bulb pops off like that, it usually means it's burnt out. But this one turned back on so suddenly that I jumped. I closed out Netflix and waited. And once again, it turned off, this time for good. I went to turn on my fairy lights by my bed. They had just been working the night before and usually last quite a while, but they would not turn on. Any horror movie I've watched with a teenager that has fairy lights, it, it's just bad things are going to happen. I just can't do the fairy lights thing because any horror movie I've watched that has them in there has the lights have to do something with the spirit or the ghost or whatever is going to take over their body. Fairy it lights just, is like Christmas lights, correct? They're like tiny twinkly lights. They're not as big as Christmas lights. They're Could smaller. you do a Stranger Things season one and put letters underneath all of them so no. that they could communicate? No. Okay, cool. They're don't tiny. don't do that. That's a makeshift Ouija board. I just realized. So yeah. Oh, the thing on the Stranger Things. Yeah. yeah. So right on. Okay. So these things are not working. All three three strings i got the nerve to close my laptop get up turn my light switch off and open my door thoroughly shaken up i went in search of light bulbs and couldn't find any so i lit some candles and tried to go to sleep i slept terribly and had some of the worst nightmares i've had in a long time i remember they involved my mom which is significant later i woke up the next morning after getting maybe three hours of sleep and laid in bed for a while I heard my sister playing broken piano chords downstairs and figured my mom was awake and making breakfast. So I got up. Literally, they know it's and, not the sister. <laughs> so I got up and came out of my room. It's a really fun, da funny Dana Carvey joke from the 90s where he's like, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night because you hear someone on the piano and you're like, what the hell is that? And you realize it's just your cat. And you're like, oh, it's boots. No big deal. It's so like, and then an hour later, you're like, bum, 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 meow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be so cute. And it sounded really good. Wasn't that weird? It's a great joke. That's a really good stand-up from the 90s. Really topical stuff about O.J. Simpson when it happened is in that stand-up. That's how <gasps> oh, fucking old I am. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So here's the sister playing broken piano chords downstairs. Got up. Comes out of room. On my way to the bathroom, I passed my sister's room. To my surprise, she was not downstairs called playing it, the called piano. It, called it. But fast asleep in her bed. I knew it. My mom's door was closed and locked, and my dad and brother were away on a hunting door? trip. I don't know. Why would the mom lock the door like that? Why would... What if your kids need you? Just knock. Knock no, on your parents' door. I think that's door. weird. No one was awake in the house. I'm not going to bust my parents out. No one was awake in the house <laughs> except me. I ran back to my room and waited until my mom knocked on my door and told me to come out. I didn't want to mention anything to her because I didn't want her knowing I had watched American Horror Story, so I kept quiet on the way to school. What she said in the, in the car gave me chills, though. 
She said she slept horribly and had strange, awful dreams about me. My dreams had been about her as well. I never actually told her about watching the show, but I did ask if my sister had been playing the piano. They said no one had been downstairs playing it. You better believe I won't be watching that show after that. That's hilarious. That's super That's, creepy, too. It's super creepy, but I, I watch... I have watched almost all of the American Horror Story seasons. I haven't watched the one with the clowns and the, uh, well, the one with the clowns is the American post-apocalyptic one, the super political one. I don't know. Or that's no? not that's not post-apocalyptic. That's just the political one. Oh, okay. The post-apocalyptic one is the one with like witches and warlocks. Oh, I've watched that one. Which overlaps seasons. We never finished that one because we, we were watching okay. it as it came out. But the, I, there's only been like two seasons that I've missed because we haven't kept up with it. But I, I mean, they're just really creepy, strange well shows. Well done, too. Well done shows. And I just think that's so funny that it's something like... <laughs> That's the reason why these weird things happen. You know, I think why these things happen, and this is just me speculating, obviously. I think it's just about fear. The energy you give out when you're afraid. Because if you're a person that's yes. like, not yep. something isn't taboo, so you're not afraid that you're doing it, or you're not afraid of it, like you're not putting fear out there. Because it's like, it is quite a palpable feeling. Like you can walk into a room and you can look at someone and be like, what's wrong? You know? Yeah. Because you can tell someone's afraid or deathly afraid of something, like facial expressions, body language, all that. Um, so I wonder if like, that's some of the things that like lead to incidents like this happening. Uh, and the email actually goes on. And I think it's shifted out of Tasha's voice now back into the person who sent this to us. Thank you, Tasha, for sending us in your story uh, by proxy. It says, I'm not completely caught up on the podcast yet, but I've been wanting to send something in since I started listening. We might send in some more stories because I know she has some more cool ones. Thank you so much for reading and for making a super cool podcast. Thank you. Love, Lily and Tasha with three hearts. Thank you so much, Lily and Tasha, for sharing Tasha's story. Yeah. It, that's awesome. Sincerely, like we appreciate both of you immensely. And this is a really good lesson to anyone who has a friend with a story get them to tell that story seriously yeah. it's just i don't know it's awesome when people share this stuff and it brings people closer together uh and also apparently don't watch american horror story if it scares I, the shit out of you i think it is that fear thing where spirits around you feed off of your fear and if you're not used to watching things that are scary like that because i think the first season is kind of scary i've never I mean, seen the first season actually murder house or whatever it is God, it has that hottie hottie boom Bilotti in it what is his name dylan, dylan mcdermott, McDermott. Yeah. oh my god uh anyway <laughs> Sorry. Hotty, hotty, boom, boom, <laughs> Dylan McDermott hit me up. No. Um, we haven't given sexy shout outs to celebrities in a while. Yeah. It's been a while. So, Congratulations, Dylan McDermott. <laughs> you cracked the code. But uh, there are parts of that season that are really scary because it's just a house full of ghosts. Right. And so, um, and, and then that's the first season that has the weird guy in the latex suit. He's creepy. Um, but I can totally see that being really scary and then feeding this. The, the spirits with all this fear and stuff like that. Uh, but let me share with you guys some of the weird coincidental sto stories of things that have happened that have freaked me out because just, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, I was getting ready for work and the light was on in the bedroom and we have a remote for the light. And I was sitting down to put on socks or something and the light dimmed it started getting dim really, really fast, and it freaked me out. Were you sitting on the remote? I was sitting on the stupid remote. She never, <laughs> she never looks where she's sitting. And like, <laughs> they invented the whoopee cushion for Robin. Because when you see that, you're like, how is anyone going to miss a giant ball that's like pink or flesh toned? And every time I've seen one, I've thought that until I met Robin, who just like lays down and smashes into things. The light was dim the other day. You didn't put it back up, did you? You just left it half dim. And I tried to put it back up. I didn't I know went in there and I was it. like, what the hell is with this mood lighting? And I had to hold the I, thing down. Yeah, so I tried to make it bright again. I put it in as bright as I thought, but whatever. Anyway, that <laughs> freaked me out. And then I want to say a year ago or maybe two years ago, I was in the office by myself. I don't know if I've shared this story before. I think we did. But, but it's been a while. Yeah. I, I was in the office by myself and I was just doing my whatever I was doing on the computer. I don't even remember what I was doing. It was so long ago. But I just heard this loud, ridiculously loud uh, pop and then a screeching, just blaring alarm. Right. And it was just so loud and it was horrifying. My heart leapt into my chest. I was screaming. I was so scared. I ran like my my chest is like my heart's beating really hard right now. Screaming. Um, and so I ran down the stairs um, and I was just so freaked out. And um, 
the alarm eventually stopped. And I slowly crept back up here because I was just like, I don't know what it what it was. It was just so loud. Was my loud. mom at the time? Uh, I think so. I, I don't remember. But I went and checked what it was. It was the stupid fire alarm. The battery in the fire alarm exploded. So it had exploded in the in the in the actual like canister or whatever, and it was just malfunctioning, and it was oh screaming. my god, it was screaming at me. It was I like, can just see the noise going out, and like you and my mom like slowly tiptoeing up the stairs, like I was dun, so dun, dun, scared. Dun, 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 dun. That's so funny. Um, but I've never been that scared in my entire life. It's good though. Yeah, it's good that it was uh benign. It wasn't anything like too dangerous. So. Good stuff. I'm glad you guys triggered those memories in Robin. So again, thank you to sending that, Lily and Tasha. We appreciate you. This next email is fairly long, so I hope you folks grab a drink, grab a snacky, um, strap yourselves in. It's going to be a wild ride. Is it really that long? It's pretty freaking long. Look at this. That's pretty freaking long. Look at this. Holy balls. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me grab my cup of coffee, and you may begin. Cup of coffee on the corner for a quarter. Cup of coffee on the corner for a quarter. Uh, all right. This one is from Loretta, and it's just some scary stories that we can share. Firstly, hello, Adam's mom, which I absolutely <laughs> love. I think that's super great because she is the first one yeah. that reads any of these. So Always greet spooky mom. Yes. So firstly, hello, Adam's mom, who I'm sure will read this first. I hope my writing has minimal errors to make your part easier. Thank you for your time and effort. We all appreciate it greatly. You're the best. That's adorable. Thank <laughs> that you. That is super adorable. And I think she definitely deserves a lot of credit because she has her own job. She literally does she, this while she's doing her she job. She works and she reads these and edits these yep. during her work day. And I think it's really important that she gets credit because she's a big part of it. Yeah, too. Shout out to Spooky Mom. Uh, hello, Adam and Robin and all the spooky friends. That's you guys. Hello. hello. Everyone shout hello at the top of your lungs wherever hello. you're at whenever you're listening to this right now. Hello. 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 It's echo- echoing. Not really. <laughs> Okay. My name is Loretta. I'm 22, and I'm from London. Whoop, whoop. That is so cool. Uh, that's our next trip idea. We just don't know how to plan it because we don't know anything about London. I was just telling Adam earlier today yeah. that uh, t- planning our trip to Japan was so much easier because I knew what I wanted. I knew where everything was going to be. And planning the buses, the, or not even the buses, the trains, all our trains, was so easy. She was like, it's going to be so much harder to go on vacation in London. <laughs> I'm like... But, but we, we speak, speak the that language. language. Uh, and I get that, but I don't know anything about uh, the UK at all. I don't know anything about London. I don't know how hard it would be to hop on a train to maybe go country hopping. Uh, I want to check out Cardiff uh, at least once in my lifetime. I think that would be really cool. Can- I was like, we could go to Italy, and she's like, too far. So I just watched like, the dreams that I have, like, just burst <laughs> in the flames before my very eyes. So we'll just, well, I mean... Anybody who has tips on planning a trip to the UK and Europe and like trying to fit a whole bunch of stuff into seven days, let us know. Uh, All right. Continuing on. I've been listening to your podcast through Spotify. Shout out to Spotify. Shout out to Spotify. Uh, I didn't say that. It was added in the email. So. (laughs) I mean, technically you did say it though. (laughs) Way to control (laughs) Robin. Mind control games. So since around September slash October 2018. Nice. Thank you. It came up on my recommended. The first episode I ever heard from you guys was the creepypasta one about the Russian sleep experiment. I'm not going to lie. Hearing that really made me want to throw up. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. But I've been hooked ever since. I really love what you do and the community you've built around it. I hope you guys will continue to grow and be around for a very, very long time. We hope so, too. Uh, We've recently made a bunch of podcast friends somehow on Twitter, which is super cool. Somehow really means another podcast basically tweeted a bunch of podcasts and we're like, like, um, we appreciate these podcasts, and they're calling us Pod Fam. It was really cool. It was really cool. So the, the Otter Limits podcast, it's O D D E R yep. podcast. Um, check them out. They're super, super nice and supportive. There's a lot of other awesome. ones. We'll give them shout outs too once we remember the names because yeah. there's been a lot of Twitter interaction um, the last we'll, couple of days. We'll post it on Twitter. But um, I've been thinking about writing in for the longest time, and have had to convince myself to write. In as none of my stories or experiences are really scaryish, but I really want to share it with you guys. You can split it up and read them as you wish if it's too heavy slash long to read at once. Um, well, we might as well read them all together. Here we go. Settle in, folks. Yeah. So story one, ghost projection. When I was younger, I never thought ghosts were real, not because of skepticism, but because they were portrayed more like how vampires are portrayed to me. Don't get me wrong. I've always believed in things like aliens, not as the movies portray, as I believe things exist outside of our knowledge. 
be it in different galaxy, universe, or dimensional plane. But I've always thought of ghosts as more of a human imagination. Watched too much Casper or... <laughs> so, yeah, I can see that. Watching too much Casper is just like I love some, that movie as yeah, a kid. I do too. Can I keep you? Christina Ricci hit me up. Uh, <laughs> so, human imagination or coping mechanism. My one and only time where I thought I'd ever witnessed a ghost was when I was around 10 or 11 years old. We had family staying over with us. I have an older sister and two younger brothers, so including our parents, we were a family of six. We lived in an average size apartment at the time, which is still small compared to the rest of the world because houses in London are so frustratingly tiny for the price that you pay. With three bedrooms, I remember correctly, uh, if I remember correctly, one of my aunts who lived out of town was visiting with her family and so were some cousins. That's cramped. Yeah. That's a lot of people in there. Uh, So we accommodated, which meant the kids all got put into the biggest room together, my parents' room. So that night, I remember they put all the kids to bed early as we were all really young and the adults stayed up a lot longer. Because I've been blessed by my dad's genes, I can't sleep for long periods of time and usually wake up after about four hours of sleep. Yes, I do see it as a blessing because my morbid view is I'll sleep all I want once I'm dead and need more hours of of living. A lot of successful people, so... Uh, it works for you, man. Go with it. <laughs> I remember waking up that night and looking over to the left-hand side of the bedroom door, which was directly opposite the bed, and seeing what I believed to be the ghost of my paternal grandfather. I wasn't scared, uh, more so trying to get a better look. That's very brave. I wouldn't be able to do it. Some people are just really curious when they see paranormal but stuff. it disappeared as my mom opened the door to check in on us, as it was probably only just after 1 o'clock at night. The thing that bugs me the most about my own memory is that instead of a ghost, it seemed more like a projection. I'm imagining like, help us, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're our only hope. (laughs) I was imagining Um, like the Tupac projection. (laughs) (laughs) Like Hatsune Miku? A little bit, I guess. Uh, I like Obi-Wan Kenobi the best. Or actually, no. That's that's, uh, uh, Princess Leia. Yeah, I was going to say. But you know, whatever. Tomato, tomato. She's got owned. Like the old ones. Rip me. Like, so like the old ones they used in school to display stuff on the board. Okay. So it was like a fake like 2D just right. projection. So on I the guess wall. Tupac was a bit more accurate. No, because that's a 3D projection. The new concert that they have, the two, Tupac it's an concert. Old, that old one. Is like just Michael like, Jackson that well, they have Well, it's like now? they shine the, this is so stupid, but they shine like <laughs> the light that projects it and they have like smoke so that it like hits like uh, a 2d uh, uh, surface uh, okay. it's like I'm, the face on the pirates of the caribbean ride i see what you're saying i was thinking like the new 3d projection to stuff that Nothing, they have none now. of the cool stuff they have now, now. okay um so <laughs> that was a very strange tangent anyway <laughs> welcome to the so, holograph corner so it was like 360p quality which is uh low that's really low uh, if you guys watch youtube videos you know 720 is like the minimum you want to go yeah <laughs> Uh, it also bugs me because I've never, ever met him, nor have I ever seen any full body photos of him. My grandfather passed away when my father was only 16 and he died of lung cancer. So not even my mom had ever met him. I've only seen about one or two photos of him also, but that night I thought I saw a full body ghost projection of him. And instead of being scared, I tried to get a better look. I always thought it could always be just my own mind creating these images because when I was younger, I was always super curious about what kind of person he was and what he did, etc. But my parents aren't and never have been the type who spoke to us or opened up about feelings or ever encouraged that kind of talk. They're quite conservative, traditional, and hard-headed, but I don't blame them since they grew up under communist rule in Albania. That wow. uh, I think a lot of families that had parents or, or grandparents or whatnot that grew up during a war time era are just that way they're just especially hard. like an oppressive rule like that too where it's like it's just shit you don't talk about like yeah. the society is like it's not like they had the open communication levels that, right like my parents were came, came from communist vietnam too so i mean i i totally know what you're talking about with the whole parents being closed off because i mean they're coming from something that's so if you you cannot, cross the line they'll kill you. yeah you cannot imagine that and for those of you who can like holy shit you've lived a rough life yes Uh, The majority of my conversations were all related to schoolwork, grades, and how important school was, so I never asked them about my grandfather or anything of the sort, nor have I ever mentioned this to them. I've never really thought or experienced anything like that ever since then. I don't think it was closure or a coping mechanism because I don't really have any memories or attachment to him. So So that experience really was the beginning of what I started to think 
or when I started to think about the afterlife or what my life means, because it doesn't make sense to me why he would appear to me like that. And hopefully one day I might get the chance to ask him if that sort of thing does exist or might figure out why my mind would create such an image. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a really logical way to look at something like that because not normally, but a lot of people would just be like, "It's a ghost." But when you sit down and you think about it like that, why is my brain trying to show me this? I think a lot of people too try and sensationalize the paranormal shit that they see because you know it's just something so shocking. You want people to feel the way you felt when you saw it, but when you take that rational approach to how you saw something, and when you have an environment around you where it's like. You can't really talk about it. I think when we experience, when we have people, especially that write in for us, we notice that those folks have this different take on the things that they see, where yeah. they're very logical about something that they saw being super creepy. Really interesting way to think about things, and kind of makes me think about things that maybe I've seen or or stuff like that. Not that I've seen very much, but you know, story two, titled "Superstitions." Another story I wanted to share with you was about superstitions. I know you guys already did the episode and the special hashtag, but I missed it. So here, I'll bring it up again if you all don't mind. I think we could still bring up like- I'm going to do superstitions again. I almost did superstition two this week, actually. Really? Yeah, I was super close to it, but I was like, I really need to investigate this whole thing. So I don't want the other one instead. Uh, My culture is very superstitious with lots of old lady tales being passed down the generations. And it seems out of all my siblings, it's only me who has become very superstitious. Some superstitions that are less normal than others that when I grew up were drilled into me from family are as follows. Never clip your nails after midday. Never whistle at night. If you so that's like me. Yeah. If you walk over someone's legs when they're sat down, they will stop growing? That's messed up. What? If you step on someone's toes, you're cursing them unless they step on your toe back. Interesting. That, that is really interesting. Cool. Sounds painful, too. Uh, it's bad luck if two people are drinking water at the same time to stop at the same time. One person has to drink longer. If someone sneezes after someone says something, it means it must be true. That Ooh. one's weird. Um, there's a riddle in Albanian, which goes along the lines of you sneeze. So it's true, but it rhymes in Albanian. So it makes sense. (laughs) That's how we catch liars. (laughs) Just kidding. But it's fun to use. Anyway, back to the sort of story. Basically, this might sound weird, but I've had close family and friends pointed out to me, uh, also because of how often it happens, which really bugs me. Living in London, our natural pet is flying rats slash pigeons, or, or, or you know, they're pigeons, not rats slash pigeons. Um, it was a dig at the pigeons who listened to the yes. podcast. Fuck you, pigeons. <laughs> Which we hate. Burn. But I often find myself seeing and being surrounded the most by magpies. Which are another bird. But steal shit. Um, <laughs> That's where that cut like. All I think about is comes from. Uh, magpie from Doctor Who. And then I think of the chick that's like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, that's so uh, annoying. <laughs> because of English riddles and superstitions, I often find myself counting them. And if there's only one by itself, I would either salute it or say hello and ask how it is. Don't question it. But it's just evidence of how superstitious I am. I happen to see them so frequently that they're always in close proximity or usually fly and jump around the buildings in the direction I'm going in until I go inside a building. That's scary. I would, I definitely, that, that'd be something that I'm like, what is going That's on? That's a bit bizarre for sure. If I'm already inside, they're usually loitering around opposite the building I'm in. I usually see them in pairs. And when I do speak out loud to them, like a mad woman, it almost feels like they understand because they'll look directly at me. <laughs> My English friends always say, as long as it's not only one by itself, it's not bad luck. But friends of other cultures always say it's bad luck, no matter the number, to have them following you. But they've never appeared or loitered around when something bad has happened in my life, so I don't see them as bad luck. I don't want to sound like a crazy person, so I've only mentioned it to people close to me. But I was wondering what you guys thought and what your views on birds in general. To me, they have become a sort of comfort, but unnerved because of how often I see them when others don't, especially for the area I live in. Um, My thoughts are that if nothing bad has happened to you, then they can't possibly be a bad thing. I think once they stop, maybe, you know what I mean? Like they follow you your entire life. You see them all the time. And then one day they just stop. That would be the day 
I got scared. I think it's it's one of those things where it's almost like a kinship. Or it's like you have a bunch of familiars if you were a wizard. So it's kind of cool. Uh, la, 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 la. I also wanted to mention that around last October, I put on Discord that my university professor was taking us to see Women in Black at the theater. And we had a chance to have a Q&A with the actors afterwards. Ooh, Daniel Radcliffe? I don't I think it's something different. Oh. It sounds like it's a play. Oh, okay. And what questions you guys might have. Sorry this is really late because I'm in the final year of uni and it's been very, very busy. I know you guys all said you didn't really have anything specific to ask them, but I ended up asking them if they were or have become superstitious. I mainly asked because of the nature of the story. I'm trying not to spoil anything because it's a masterpiece. Both the actors did say that they were superstitious, and one of them said he had become superstitious after working on this production. So does a play. I thought it was worth sharing as I found it fascinating that somebody superstitious would take up that production for work. I still find myself waking up or suddenly hearing the sound of a rocking chair followed by a horse and carriage and then a scream. So I have no clue how they do it. In fact, about a week after this, I remember riding on the central line, which is incredibly loud and death for your ears, with my friends and hearing a crash and a scream. I was so shocked and scared, I looked around at my friends, the people in the carriage, and on the platform, but they were all acting normal. My friends, seeing my face, asked me if I'm okay, and I told them what I heard, and they joked that the woman in black was coming after me. I still remember how loud and real it felt to me, though, which still gives me shivers. I hope to never hear it again, but I still badly want to see the production again because it's so good. My one recommendation for you guys when you come to this part of the world will definitely be to watch a theater show. Don't leave London without seeing one. I want to see the Harry Potter one. The, um... Cursed Child. The Cursed Child, yes. But I hear it is so expensive, so I don't know if we can afford Isn't it. Isn't it like in two parts also? It's two parts, yeah. yeah so you you either, either you have to come one day and then the next day or watch them both at once on one day and spend like hours and hours and hours there because it's so long. Um, anyway, a few fears is the next part. Finally, I just wanted to share some scariest things that have happened or a few fears. When I was younger, I used to always hear my mom's voice calling me and I'd run to her and she'd always tell me that she never called me or she never said a thing. We just had one like that last week or two weeks ago, I think. Really? Yeah. It was super creepy. It was the same thing too, where it's like they heard their mom calling them and it was about um, the Wendigo. It was the Wendigo uh, email uh, uh. we got. This used to creep me out and scare me more than any demon could. The reason is because of what I grew up watching. The majority of my family, including my father and uncles, are involved in working in and with the military, police, and investigation units. Therefore, I grew up watching FBI files and true crime shows from a really young age, making me paranoid. One of the many things I've learned from my father is to always check for the exits in every building you enter. So naturally, watching those sorts of shows, I witnessed cases of child abductions, etc., where they could mimic or use things you're familiar with to draw you in. So whenever I'd hear my mother's voice like that calling me, one part of my paranoid brain would think someone's trying to kidnap me. Another part of me used to think that there was another universe or dimension that I can't see, but I had weirdly been able to tap into and hear. And your mom's just on the other side calling you at the same time. That would be horrible if your mom was calling you. Like, it basically you had two moms calling you for tasks and only one of them was real. So, you know, you're just always checking in to see, like, what do you need? And it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That sounds miserable. The final rational part of me now knows better and will put the blame to my head. There are a couple of weird things that I find absolutely terrifying to this day. One of them is someone standing outside or looking into my windows. That is scary. Whenever I let the dogs out, I always check. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to see someone standing there in the dark. That freaks me out. Um, It has always terrified me to think someone was standing directly outside my window looking in. And I absolutely hate it when a curtain isn't drawn properly and has a little gap. Yep. What if you saw just some dude, some person out there, and all you saw was the little eye like staring into the room? Right. The sliver of the face that lets you just see their eye. Yeah, no. Uh, because my mind will automatically paint the vision of two human eyes there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, I'm covered in goosebumps. That's what is in the email, but I'm also freaked out. Just the idea of it gives me anxiety. Another is my reflection moving. Yes. I know that fear all too well. I will, when I brush my teeth, I try not to look in the mirror. 
I swear. It freaks me out. So did you write this email to yourself? Is this like your alter yeah, ego from my London? Alter ego. It's because uh, I had on my ring that he, like brings me back to life whenever a supernatural being kills me. And uh, I now have a second personality. I was about to call it Princess Diaries. I hate Vampire Diaries. <laughs> um, I'm re-watching it again because I have to watch Vampire Diaries, then Originals, then Legacies. Because I started watching Legacies and a character is alive that I thought was dead. And so now I have to go all the way back and see how he's alive. It's just, ugh. Anyway. It's um, just, ugh. It's not good. <laughs> the idea that my reflection will move or change expressions terrifies me. It scares me to the point of I'll only use a mirror when absolutely necessary and avoid looking directly at one during the night. This is hard since my parents have placed mirrors everywhere in our home. They say it's to transfer light and create better spacing, but for me, it's a game of dodge my demon self. That's funny. The last thing I'll share is imposters. I always used to have nightmares that I was confronted with one of my family members and an imposter and had to kill one of them, but never knew who was the real one. I also had dreams about an imposter pretending to be me whilst I was tied up somewhere else witnessing them. The thing for me that I found out thanks to nightmares is that when I'm terrified, I don't scream. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> There's like... Are you saying you're calm when you're terrified or that noise just doesn't come the out? The sound gets caught in my throat. There Never mind. That's normal. Now I know. That happens to me all the time. Uh, and that's true in real life also. I sort of freeze, which means I'm perfect to kill. Oh my God. That's what horrible. the F? <laughs> Don't put that out there. It genuinely, scare genuinely scares me that I freeze and I can't control that. I wish I had more normal fears like my siblings, like being scared of clowns, the dark, of or spiders. But I get all the weird ones. <laughs> Hopefully my stories weren't all that boring and at least one person was able to relate. Love what you guys do. Absolutely adore and love the community you've built. I will be sure to write to you as soon as I experience anything scaryish. I hopefully will be able to finally catch a live show as I've always had classes the next day and you guys do li go live during witching hours here in the UK. So I opted out of joining live. But now that I'm done, I should be able to catch a few. I also can't wait for the movie podcast to air. Have an awesome day or night. Keep on creeping on. All the best. Loretta. Thank you so much for all your stories. Yeah, they those were are really, really fucking good. Yeah, Loretta. they're really well written. Um, and I definitely can relate to all your fears. Yeah, <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff in there solid. we can relate to. So really, really, really good stuff. Thank yeah. you so much for saying that. And I think we kind of reflected on those as we went. Uh, but yeah, that was excellent. So good stuff. All right, so I'm going to move into my last email of the show, which also happens to me by the longest one. It's not as long as Robin's, though. Its subject is homegrown horrors. And it starts out like this. Hello, Adam and Robin. Hello. Hello. I'm sweaty. <laughs> wow, weird. My name is Lindsay. Hi, sweaty. I'm Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started listening to your podcast for the past few weeks on Spotify. Shout out Spotify. I listen to this everywhere. Home, car, at work, in the back with headphones and my hoodie up so I don't get caught. And right now, I'm at episode 13. Lucky number. I love that while you have the regular hauntings that other podcasts do, you also have regular people's stories, which I know everyone is special in their own way. You guys are beautiful, but the point is still there. Thanks. Now, before I get into my homegrown horror, I just want to say that my computer is being an ass and is not letting me type as fast. So some of the letters are not being typed out and I'm not an English major. So there might be some mistakes in general. So I am apologizing now, Adam and Robin. When keys don't work, that's the most frustrating thing because you're like, I need to type this F. Right. And what am I going to put in, in in the spot instead of an F, you know? When keys don't work, just that's when PH. <laughs> keyboards get broken. That's funny. <laughs> All right, and the first one is called My Sleep Paralysis Story, and it goes like this. I was 16, and my family and I just moved back to America from living in Japan. That sounds oh, pretty wow. Awesome. Jelly. While my parents were looking for a house, my twin... You have a twin? Okay. This is going to get... I don't know. I just got super excited. My twin Lisa and I were staying with a family friend. She lived in a one-bedroom trailer. I think that's how you spell it. At least that's what autocorrect said. Anyway, Lisa and I took the bedroom and the family friend took the couch. In the bedroom, there was a queen-size bed and to the side was two sliding doors for the closets with full-length mirrors in those doors. And nope. they showed the bedroom from the middle of the bed to the door leading towards the hallway. Yeah, my sister no. slept on the side where the mirrors were on oh and I God. slept next to the wall. Smart move. We only stayed in that room for one night, but it had always stuck with me for the last eight years. Back to the story. I was jolted awake the next morning. It was 6 to 7 a.m. during the summer, and in Idaho, sun would be up already. 
So there was light in the room, but I was paralyzed. I was freaking out because this never happened to me before. The first sleep paralysis is always the worst. Or, you know, the last one. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God. Shut up. My eyes were moving (laughs) everywhere, trying to find the cause uh, of my paralyzed form. I'm facing the closet doors, and I felt the need to look down towards them to see in the mirrors this shadow figure. It looked like the woman in black with black flames surrounding her, making hissing noises as she slash he slash it was standing at the foot of the bed in the mirror, but it was not outside of the mirror, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So you couldn't see it at your own feet, but when you looked in the mirror, you saw this thing standing at your feet that looked terrifying. Its hands were reaching out towards me, and that freaked me out even more, because between me and this flaming woman in black was my twin sound asleep. I just knew that she was in danger, and I had to warn her, but I was paralyzed, and there was no way to do that. Does that stop me from trying? Hell no. That's my sister, bitch. With my heart beating really fast, like the Jumanji drums in my ears. I think we can all hear that now. I got my arm that was under me to move towards Lisa. I'm whispering her name with slowly, while slowly moving my hand. Lisa. Lisa. Looking back and forth between her and the shadow figure. I was hoping that my movements wouldn't make the thing suddenly pounce on us. Oh, my God. Finally, my hand touched her face, and when skin-to-skin contact was made, the figure disappeared, the drumming stopped, and my hand was back to where it was before I started moving it, Whoa. and I was unparalyzed. I have chills. Whoa, that's, like, yeah. that's scary. I sat that, up. Oh, okay. I Finish. sat up and started to shake Lisa awake to see if she also saw this nightmare figure. The only thing that was a nightmare at the time was my morning breath on her face. Oh, my God. Bitch. But it just makes me think, like, it's her spirit reaching out to touch her. You know what I mean? Because the oh, her hand... I thought you meant the, the nightmare woman was the spirit. No, 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 no. So when her hand touched her face, it was like her spirit trying to reach out and touch her because when she snapped out of it, right, her hand was didn't move. That's scary shit. So it, that's <laughs> she did an OK symbol for the ninety nine percent of you that listen to this and don't watch <laughs> it. All right, and it says after that end of homegrown horse. Uh, and it ends the email like oh, this. Oh, that's so... Oh, wait, no. I still have one, too. I thought it was going to be appropriate because it was going to be the last no. one. Dang it. Anyway, that is my homegrown horror, and I hope you liked it. I have more stories, but I thought you might like this one. I never had any more sleep paralysis. You are free to share it, and if you do, then please tell me so I can skip to hear your reaction, then go back to episode 14 or whatever early episode that I'm on. Aww. Thank you for reading. Thank well, thank you, you for, for sending, sending that. It. We sincerely appreciate it, and... Seeing that you have a twin sister, I'm sure you have a bunch of interesting twin stories that you can yes. tell us as well. Because I have cousins that are twins, and so does Robin, and they always have good stories. Yeah. So I mean, that was good shit. It's not the same as me telling my coworkers when they wear the same shirt that they're twinning. <laughs> I mean, everyone says twinning. Like we at work sometimes <laughs> we're like, tomorrow it's black pant, black pants, gray shirt day, hashtag twinning, and then you come in and like no one did um, it. Today they were making fun of a couple of my coworkers because they both had like the same pattern shirt on. So we're just like, twinsies. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, great shit. Thank you for sending that, Lindsay. We appreciate it. And uh, thank your sister for somehow, via spirit touch, snapping you out of that yes. and saving you. Or you saved her. Who knows? But good stuff. Yeah. So the final email of the night is titled, Hello Again. You can share it on your podcast. Thank you. Appreciate that. This is a short one, isn't it? Uh, Yeah, pretty short. Cool. So it goes, yo, dogs. My name is Angel, and I'm a boy. Yo. Yo. What's up? Uh, I had sent an email a long time ago about a double sleep paralysis on the same night during Thanksgiving. Besides the double sleep paralysis, uh, I have not had any paranormal experiences despite going to some paranormal and creepy places. One of those things being a park and stupidly walking off the trail into a dense, thick forest. However, when I was young, I used to have a sort of sixth sense or superpower looks off into the distance (laughs) that's funny when i was in kindergarten i used to get bullied a lot and it was like the typical tv bully where my bullies would be waiting on a corner waiting for me to give them my lunch money but more of the type of bully where they would push punch and insult me at the most random times that's annoying that's 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 just really shitty stuff i can't imagine having a bully in kindergarten man that's so young oh my god but i've said some things where i didn't realize it was going to hurt someone's feelings and they did so sometimes when you were in kindergarten well i was in second grade but yeah i was a little kid uh you don't think about those things i bumped into a kid one time in kindergarten like we were all in a single file line and we're supposed to be walking in and we started walking and i turned my head because someone said something to me behind me and he stopped for whatever reason he stopped and i bump into him and he fell down 
And of course, the teacher ran over because he was crying. And they're like, what happened? And he just like pointed at me. He's like, he shoved me. And like, Aww. as a kindergarten, I'm trying to explain like, I really didn't. I just wasn't paying attention. And he stopped and I bumped into him and it was an accident. But as a kindergartner, I'm just like, I didn't. You know, you don't know what to say. Yeah. So I like got yelled at at school and then I got home and my mom was waiting for me at the bus stop to walk me home and talk to me about how like to that kid, I'm a bully and I'm bigger than him and I shouldn't push him. And in my head, it's... I was like, I'm going to beat the shit out of that kid. Like he's a fucking liar. Yeah. And and. When you bully kids when you're little, it's just so rough. And you have to think that there's something going on at their home that makes them feel like they need to act out and hurt other people. Yeah, and that had a significant Um, impact on me as a kid. Because I was like, I thought immediately when that happened, adults will never believe me. When I try and tell them I didn't do something, they'll never be on my side. And I felt that way for a very long time. And, like, I refer to that incident. Like, every time I'm like, that little bastard started it all. This bullying continued into elementary and middle school. Fuck those guys people what is wrong with people i hate them bullies are bad 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 however as the bullies continued to surprise me i developed the ability to sense people before i could see or hear them i could be sitting in a typical loud cafeteria and 100 miles away from the door and somehow i could sense someone walking in sometimes it felt like i could also sense spirits because sometimes i could sense a presence in an empty room the gift sadly started fading as i got older and no longer needed to look over my shoulder I'm now 19 and no longer can sense when someone's walking into a room or feel their presence nearby. Thank you for being an amazing podcast. Thank you, Angel, for sharing your... It's really good. Yeah. It's like a sense of self-preservation develops and you're probably too young to like doubt it. So you just like leaned into it, which is kind of awesome. Yeah. And and sometimes people need it, especially someone who's getting picked on constantly. Like... You just know. You just know. Um, Not everyone has that, so it's a good thing that you did that. Yeah, so I'm glad that now that you're an adult, you no longer need to watch out for people coming in because... You don't have to look over your shoulder. Yeah, nobody deserves to live their life that way. Bullies as kids and bullies as adults are just usually very broken people. Broken, sad, lonely, damaged in some way people. And like, it's so annoying in general that they have to take that out on someone else who has nothing to do with it. Because in most cases... The victim of the bullying would probably be the most sympathetic or empathetic person to what that person was going through. Yeah. You know, if you just change the interaction just a little bit, you could be a support system rather than like a tormentor, which is so annoying. Because if you're out there and you're bullying someone, like there's probably something very wrong and just stop being an asshole about it. And I bet you could probably find someone who's like going to be there for you. But yeah, it's a good email. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who sent us your stories. We appreciate all the homegrown horrors we get. And if you have a story you would like to share with us, you can email storytime at scarish.com or go to our website, scarish.com, and click on Contact Us. You can also hit us up on our social medias. Twitter is at scarishpod, Instagram is at scarishpodcast, and Facebook is facebook.com slash scarishpodcast. We'd be happy to hear from you. If it's a story that you want to share but you don't want shared on the podcast, we are absolutely willing to be that, like, I don't know, I was going to say shoulder to cry on, but not so much. I guess it's just like that ear to whisper something to and keep it private because we have nothing. We have people that do that and we totally understand it because you kind of just want to say like, hey, I just want to let you know this so I don't feel crazy and you're not crazy and that's what we're here for. So thank you to all the folks who sent us your stories to share and not and everyone who came out to support us live because we do record these episodes uh, 6 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays. So if you're in the central time, that's 8 30 Eastern time. That's 9 30. And it's a it's a fun time. It's really a, a, a wonderful social experience. So thanks I'm glad again. I didn't say experiment. <laughs> no, thanks again. One last time. And I know a lot of folks out there ask us, like, how can we support the podcast? Honestly, tell a friend. Ask someone to listen. Ask someone for their story. Bring people into the community. That is the absolute best way. Some people want to kick us a little bit of money, which we totally understand. And we are absolutely willing to accept. So thankful for it. Yeah, Um, because we were talking about it on this live stream. We said, like, the lights, the camera, the microphones we're using. And the action. The whole, I hate you. (laughs) The whole setup has been upgraded significantly and has improved the quality because of folks that donated. So, Robin, if folks wanted to donate, how can they do so? Uh, Coffee.com slash scaryish podcast. KO-FI.com slash scaryish podcast. And those are all one-time donations that help us upgrade our studio setup. Uh, and then there's Patreon.com slash scaryish podcast. And those are monthly donations. I do physical rewards from $10 and up. So if you folks go to Patreon.com slash scaryish podcast, you get extra content. Um a whole bunch of stuff you guys can take a look at all the tiers tiers start at a dollar right now i have a promo going where for the summer there's some merch that is exclusive to patrons 
And you also get a 10% discount code off our entire Teespring store. So if you join us on Patreon, kick us even just a dollar, uh, you get access to that promo code, access to that merchandise, and you can check it out, look at it, buy some stuff. It's cute. It's our ghoul for the summer design. I've posted it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. I almost spilled my coffee, but okay. If you are planning to buy anything that's $10 off the merch stores currently and you sign up for Patreon first, you will earn your money back based off that discount. If you're going to pay for more than that uh, and you're signing up for a dollar, you're saving, you're just saving money. If you're going to buy a few things, you might wind up like ahead in the entire deal, which is a pretty good setup. It's brilliant. It's Robin marketing is what I like to call it because it's so (laughs) smart. So, Um, but yes, we would love your support. Please join us over there. Indeed. And I think that's just about everything that we have for this episode of story time. So thank you one last time to everyone who sent stories and everyone who joined us. Robin, go ahead and sign us out. Keep on creeping on, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Also, subscribe. Thank you. Love you, bye. Okay, thanks, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.